Hi, and welcome back to Marketplace Tech's limited series, Decoding Democracy, where we're exploring how technology is changing how we participate in the 2024 election. Today on this special Voting Day episode, we'll be discussing the kinds of online misinformation narratives that could emerge as voters go to the polls and how to protect yourself from being fooled by this kind of misinformation. So joining us to help is Derek Tisler, counsel for the Brennan Center for Justice. Welcome, Derek, to the show. Thanks so much for having me on. So today, it's obviously the day that everybody's been waiting for. What sorts of misinformation narratives should people be watching out for today? So as voters are going to the polls, uh, they should keep in mind that elections are really one of the most complex logistical operations that exist in this country. On election day, there will be over 100,000 polling places that are operating, each each with its own equipment, each with temporary poll workers doing the best they can to serve their voters. And in this context, it's inevitable that some problems are going to happen in at least some locations. Uh, We're all familiar with the fact that, you know, anytime you're using technology, it could freeze or a scanner could jam or it could otherwise just not perform the way that you want it to. It's frustrating, right? But the key thing is election officials plan for these possibilities and they train poll workers on backup plans that can keep voters voting and ensure that every ballot will be counted, even if a voting machine breaks down or another small technical error happens. But that's not going to stop some people from amplifying every tiny mishap into evidence of some grand conspiracy theory in order to decrease confidence in elections. And so that is the the type of thing that we expect to see as voters are casting their ballot on election day. I really encourage everyone today, you know, when you see claims of fraud or conspiracy, take a breath, wait for official information from the people running elections that will provide more context for whatever you see happening. That's such a good point, this idea of an isolated incident being amplified to make a larger conspiracy theory. So how do people protect themselves and others around them from falling prey to these narratives? So the biggest thing that people can do is go to trusted sources of information. Again, the best uh, source of information is going to be election officials, the people who are actually running elections, the people who understand these processes the most. It could be something where, you know, uh, it's just a innocent misunderstanding, right? So a a common thing that happens at a polling place is a scanner uh, may break down temporarily. Uh, It may jam just like a copier would jam or a printer would jam or something like that. And and it might be until that machine gets fixed, they have to securely store those ballots away until they can be counted on a functioning machine, right? If you're a voter and you've never experienced that before, it's, it's scary. It's concerning. You're kind of wondering if You know, poll workers are just making things up as they go along because something went wrong. And that's where it's really important to keep in mind, we plan for these things, right? Election officials understand that uh, the processes aren't infallible. You are always relying on, again, temporary poll workers, equipment, whatever it may be. You have to plan for all these possibilities. You have to make sure that things can continue to happen. Uh, And then as much as possible, election officials will be explaining what it is that's happening to give voters confidence and understanding of the process. Now, there's been a lot of misinformation about things like machine counting of ballots versus hand counting of ballots. What should voters know about that? Yeah, so as you said, there's there's been this uh, recent push by some people to get rid of voting machines altogether uh, that count ballots and instead have every ballot counted by hand. And this is a bad idea for several reasons. You know, one, studies and practices have shown that hand counting ballots is much more expensive and it takes far longer to get election results than we'd be able to get with voting equipment. And most importantly, it's far less accurate than counting ballots using a voting machine. And that's because humans are, they're really bad (laughs) at these sort of tedious, repetitive, memory-based tasks which are the exact thing that computers are designed for. So here's really what what voters should know. 98% of votes cast in this election will have a paper record. Mm -hmm. And after the election, election workers will review a sample of these ballots by hand 
in order to ensure that voting machines were functioning accurately. And this really, it gives us the best of both worlds. We get the accuracy and efficiency of voting machines, but we never have to fully rely on technology to get it right. We trust, but we verify that everything is working as it should. So let's fast forward to after the polls close in the evening when we're getting early results, exit polling, and even in the days after, what kind of misinformation should we be watching out for then? I think the most important thing to know is that election results are never final on election night in Mm -hmm. any state, and they never have been. The full process of counting ballots and certifying final results, it takes weeks. And it's because there is a series of checks that election officials go through to ensure the final count is complete and accurate. When you see media calling races on election night and in the days that follow, that's just a projection. It's a projection of which candidate is likely going to win once all the ballots are counted based on the results that we've seen at that point. Right. So in a state that's you know not very competitive in a presidential election, The media can call the results after seeing only a fraction of those total results. But in some of these swing states like, you know, Pennsylvania and Arizona that are expected to have really tight margins in the presidential race, we really need to wait until all or nearly all votes are cast until we can have confidence in who is going to win the election. And as we saw in 2020, There's a high risk of false information spreading in this period of time between when voters are done casting their ballots and when we know who won the election. And it's because, you know, everyone is feeling anxious during that time. There's high stakes. People are passionate about the election and they're so anxious for new information, but there's no new info to provide until all those ballots can be counted. And Bad actors understand this. They seek to fill this vacuum by pushing false claims of uh, ballot dumps or rigged elections. As hard as it is, like people need to have patience. Mm -hmm. They need to understand that the reason we're waiting for results is because election processes are designed to prioritize accuracy and security above all else. Speed is nice. Speed is great to have. We all want to know who won. But I think we would all agree that accuracy and security are most important. Right. And so inevitably, as we saw after 2020, there are going to be some people who just don't believe the outcome. Election denialism has been on the rise. What's the best way if somebody encounters a friend or a family member who just won't believe or or trust the outcome to help them find accurate information? Yeah, so I think one thing to understand is uh, these beliefs about a a rigged election or uh, widespread fraud or whatever it may be, uh, they're so wrapped up in who you want to win the election, right? And there there's at least some set of people who, um, if the election does not go the way that they want it to go, they're just not going to believe in the process itself. There are, I think, another group of people who... Uh, have been misled because they don't understand how the election process works. And it's because elections are extremely complicated. (laughs) And adding to that complication is the fact that, uh, you know, under our constitution, each state gets to set their own election processes. And so we don't have one election. We have 50 different elections going on at the same time. And it's hard for anybody to understand all of these various things. So I, I think what, you know, I would encourage for, People who want to learn more about the election process, you know, one, understand that the election is a public process. You can participate. You can observe aspects of it. If you have a question about how elections are run, talk to your election official. Uh, Because elections are run at the local level in the United States, that election official is someone from your community. The poll workers who are uh, running your polling place, those are your neighbors, right? Talk to these individuals if you have questions. Uh, In most states, there are observation opportunities um, when ballots are counted or at polling places or during recounts. All of this takes place in the public eye. Uh, You may be living in a county who live streams their vote counting processes and you can watch there. Get involved in the process. Ask the questions that you need to ask. Uh, It is complicated, but it's because We have these multiple systems in place to make sure that we're getting the outcome right 
that we have a complete and accurate account. Derek Tisler is a counsel at the Brennan Center for Justice. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining us for this episode of Decoding Democracy. If you have any stories you'd like to share about voting in this election, we'd love to hear from you, so leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please like and subscribe. Daniel Shin produced this episode, and I'm Kimberly Adams. Good luck voting.